Stayallday.com. Stay Tune in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is nowhere to be found because it has not yet occurred. And on top of all this, we're not done. We got to put all this into action. Now you're going to need the personal initiative to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen with all this mental game that you develop. And we, what we do here is we take all of this stuff and we package it up into one philosophy, one unifying process. We have codified our whole system. We wrote a book on the subject. We have this daily masterclass. We got a university and this daily masterclass. It's all under the umbrella called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. On today's topic, I'm going to answer a question that you may be wondering about. You may be wondering why would I, you know, when I have all this content that I talk about, all these different things, this philosophy that I just told you exactly what it's about, why would I even choose to step on the, the landmine that is talking about controversial topics, topics that could be possibly controversial? I mean, the topic itself is not controversial. It's the way people respond to the topic is what makes it controversial. So on this show, just in the last calendar year alone, not even the last calendar year, just in the last damn six, seven months alone, I talked about uh, President Donald Trump. I talked about race relations. I talked about social justice. I talked about Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, and held both of their feet to the fire and uh, criticized both of those groups, movements, whatever you want to call them. I talked about interactions between police and people of color and more things that I don't even remember. I've addressed all of these things as they've happened and given you how I feel about them. Told you exactly where I stand on these topics. Just again, in the last six, seven months that I've talked about these things plenty of times, uh, even before that. Now I could easily, the reason why I'm answering this question here today is because I could easily ignore these topics. I can easily ignore them and just stick to the evergreen stuff that I usually talk about. Again, discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative. Most of the material on this show is evergreen. It's not based on any current event or news item. And I could easily have come up with different topics to replace the ones in which I did talk about those you know, current event slash uh, civil unrest, racial justice, police, Trump, politics type of issues that I talk about. So why would I take the risk of diverting from the evergreen stuff that I talk about that the work on your game philosophy that I say it's about why divert from that path and take the risk of possibly pissing you off or having somebody stop listening to the show because I share some point of view or some opinion that somebody does not agree with today I'm going to answer that question now, before I even get into my points let me be clear that the work on your game philosophy, when I say it's about discipline, confidence, mental toughness, personal initiative, it doesn't just mean those uh, elements as standalone in a vacuum materials like discipline, like I say, showing up every day and doing the work, yes. But there's also a discipline to recognizing when something's going on and addressing it. Confidence is putting yourself out there boldly and authentically, but there's also a confidence in when you have something to say on the subject and you have a platform, you have a microphone, and you know people are listening to you and you know it's on their mind, you got to have the balls to talk about it, even if you think somebody may disagree with you. Mental toughness, continuing to show up, doing the work, putting yourself out, even when the success is yet to occur. There's also a mental toughness to knowing that you're going to speak on a subject that you know people are divided on, and no matter how much you try to be balanced and fair and objective, you're still going to piss somebody off because you didn't go hard enough for their side or hard enough against the other side. Having the mental toughness to say it any goddamn way, despite the fact that you know people are going to be mad at you because you didn't say it the way that they would want you to say it, that is mental toughness. And the personal initiative to come out there and speak on it, even when everybody else, many others who are creators or influencers who have platforms, they just completely ignore it because they're afraid of pissing anybody off. So these elements of the work on your game philosophy do apply to these subjects even in the way that I just explained to you. So you understand that I'm not actually diverting from the subject, but for people who don't, didn't quite understand why I would talk about these things when the philosophy is supposed to be, quote unquote, supposed to be about these other things, understand that those elements of work on your game are about these things. It just depends on the way that you look at it. So now that I've explained that, let's get into our points. Topic again today is why I discuss, why I choose to discuss these controversial topics when I could easily ignore them. Number one reason, is that we can't ignore and act like they're not happening. I mean, we could, but we're not going to. I'm not, first of all, the work on your game philosophy I've already explained is not about that. But secondly, me, Dre Baldwin, for those of you who know me or you've been following my content enough, you may feel like you do. I'm not about that. 
I'm not the type of person who's gonna act like something is not happening and just not talk about it. If I'm not talking about a subject, it's because I'm either not paying attention to it or I, I do not know that it's happening. It really has escaped my attention or maybe I just haven't formulated my thoughts yet or decided how I want to address it. But otherwise, I'm going to address the topic. See, I told you back in episode, I believe it's 1474, I'll check on that in a minute. I told you that to stop watching the news. Uh, it's 1474, I told you to stop watching the news because the news, they don't report what's actually happening. They make up things to happen and then they just get you excited about it because their whole business model is around keeping you uh, emotionally triggered so that you keep tuning into the news and the more you tune in, the more commercials they can show you, the more ads they can show you, the more money they make. It's all based, that's their business model. So they don't have to have a real story. They can just make stories up these days. If something is real news, you don't have to watch the news to know about it. That's what I told you in episode 1474, to know that it's happening. But real news, those are the things that should be addressed. Because I don't watch the news at all. So if I'm talking about something that's happening, a current event, that's because it's serious news. Because I didn't watch CNN or Fox or read the New York Times to know that it was occurring. And I will address those things, albeit I'm gonna address them objectively. I'm gonna address them fairly while respecting the opinions of others. Because again, if I'm addressing something, then it's probably, there are probably arguments on both sides of it. Because if everybody pretty much agrees on it, then I'm probably not gonna talk about it. I'm not adding anything to the conversation. If I talk about something that it seems like everyone already agrees on it, then I'm gonna give you a counterintuitive idea. As I've given you episodes on my counterintuitive beliefs, I'm gonna give you something that go, it zigs when you expect it to zag. Otherwise, why would I even be talking about it? If I don't have something like that on a certain subject, then I'm just not gonna talk about it. You know, that's just the way that I approach things. Otherwise, I mean, what, what value am I bringing to the table? So the number one reason why I address these subjects, even though they may be things that you know, may make people uncomfortable or just uncomfortable hearing me talk about it or you disagree with what I'm saying, we're not gonna ignore it and act like it's not around and there isn't something to be said. Somebody who has a show every day who has built their brand around, I'm gonna share the way that I feel about things. I'm going to explain why I feel this way, whether you agree or not. We can't just ignore something that's going on just because of the risk of somebody being mad about it. Point number two, today's topic, once again, is why I discuss possibly controversial topics that I could easily not talk about or that I could ignore. Point number two, my brand is built around addressing things directly. I have episodes on this show about getting direct and addressing, the thing, addressing things that are going on. I talked about this in episode number 440 clear and direct communication principles for adults. And I also talked about in episode number 1132, when to be direct in life. So we've discussed when it comes to communication skills in my people skills course, I talk about this as well. And also in the Bulletproof Mindset course, we have a module on communication, not only communication with yourself, but also communication with other people. Some, and there are times in life when you need to be direct, when you need to be clear, when people need to know exactly where you stand, no talking around it, no kind of like uh, talking in these, these airy, ethereal terms that people can't quite understand exactly what you're trying to say, but when you just need to be really clear and direct so people know exactly what you mean, exactly where you stand. The challenge with this for many people is that when you do get direct with others, you are, it's inevitable that you're going to say something that somebody completely, they're on the exact opposite side of the argument and they completely disagree with you. And now they don't want to mess with you anymore because you said something that they just don't like, or they just aren't feeling the exact same way that you're feeling. This is the reason why many people don't get direct because they don't want to deal with that blowback that can come from other people. And the other thing about being direct is when you get direct with other people, you, it may, it, it, it may be uncomfortable for them. Maybe uncomfortable for the other person to deal with someone who is being so direct. And maybe it's uncomfortable for you to be direct with other people. And many people want to avoid any kind of uncomfortable emotion. Therefore, they don't do anything that would take them outside of their comfort zone, i.e. being direct. And they never actually get to the point of whatever it is they want to say. And this is how there are so many people out here who have so many great things to say and so many great things to share. But the world never knows of it because they're afraid to put themselves out there. This is the second principle of the philosophy, confidence, putting yourself out there boldly and authentically. So you can see how all this stuff interconnects. Many influential people appear, to me at least, not all of them, but many of them, when I, I see when certain subjects, topics are going on and people are talking about them, many people appear to be afraid of addressing things directly because of these very reasons that I just explained. 
or maybe they'll address things, but they'll address them in such a way, and I've seen this happen with many an influencer, especially over the last year, they'll address things in such a way that they know that they're preaching to the choir. They're saying something that they know the people who are listening to them and reading and watching them are going to pretty much agree with what they said. So they say that so they can feel like they said something. And there's a, there's a, there's a great hustle going on to that these days. And there are many people who have taken uh, clear advantage of it. So uh, kudos to them for doing so. But if you address something such as, uh, if you address the Black Lives Matter movement or you address the Black Lives Matter hashtag, whatever you wanna call it, just me bringing up that phrase right there. If you're a white person and you address it, if you go with it, then there are some white people who are going to disagree with you because they don't they don't agree with Black Lives Matter. And if you go against it, then there are people who are going to call you racist because you're white and you're not agreeing with Black Lives Matter. If you're black and you agree with it, then you, for the most part, you'll be preaching to the choir. And a lot of people will agree with you, but there will be many people who don't. And if you're black and not even if you disagree with it. But if you were to just hold the movement, the idea, the concept, whatever you want to call it, hold it accountable and say, hey, here are some things about it that are not that are actually not right. Here are some things that this movement is not doing. Here are some things that are not being addressed. Someone's not going to like what you said. And trust me, I know, because I've written about these things. I've spoken about these things just in the last year and I'll still address it anyway, knowing this and understand that this platform allows me the space, this particular platform, this masterclass podcast gives me the space to give context of why I say what I say more, much more than Facebook would give me the space much more than an Instagram or YouTube where context is completely tossed out of the window. Even though we do put these, these videos on, on YouTube as well, and maybe take clips and things like that. But context can be completely tossed out of the window on an Instagram or YouTube, even on a Facebook. Trust me, it's happened to me in all three, all three places over 15,000 pieces of content. Trust me, it's happened. It will happen again or something like Twitter where there's not quite enough space for you to get all of your thoughts out there. And even in all of those places that I just said, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, in all of those places, there's one thing that, one element that is invited, not in, yeah, invited, that is included in all of those places that's not included here, where you're listening to me, is the comments section. Now, there's no comments on a podcast. I mean, people can leave a review, but there's no comments on each individual episode, and that's actually a positive feature of a podcast. It's a positive feature of a podcast for a couple of reasons. Number one, the speaker or speakers can say whatever they want to say and give full context to it without the concern. And I think these days we would have to identify this as a legitimate concern as to what are people going to say in the comments to what I post if I say it this way or if I say this or if I say that or do I need to turn the comments off completely or not allow people to comment or heavily moderate all the comments because I know people are going to go crazy in the comments because I'm talking about this particular topic. That's something that I think goes through the minds of a lot of creators these days when they speak on certain subjects. Another thing is because the way that you know, commentating has almost become a sport in itself. Nowadays, you, people get voted for their comments, right? So now you could be the top commentator and not even the top creator, but the top commentator and just saying something, whether you're trying to be smart or whether you're trying to have the, the funniest comment or something like that. Now is a whole culture of people who just want to leave the comment. They want to leave the best comment. They don't even want to create anything. They just want to be the person who says something about the person who created something. And that's a whole other aspect of social media that has gotten more people involved and it keeps people more engaged and it makes the social media platforms a lot more money. But at the same time, there has been a, uh, it hasn't helped. I don't think it's helped the positive discussion. I don't think it's helped a mature, rational conversation. The proliferation of, no, giving, what's the word I want to use here? Giving, uh, I, the word is escaping me, but just giving positive feedback to someone just for leaving a comment, especially when the comments can, as much, comments as, I, as much content as I have posted, listen, I've seen some comment sections that are not even worth reading, trust me. It used to be that you could have civil dis discourse in those areas, but that ship sailed probably about seven to eight years ago. The great thing about a podcast is that people just listen. I mean, it's a great idea, right? All you can do is listen to what that person says. And if you're not feeling how they're approaching it, you can stop listening to that show. You can listen to somebody else's show, but it's not going to be a lot of, there's not a ton of back and forth. There's no comment section to go back and forth with. The only star on a podcast is the people on the microphone and they are preaching to their choir. The people who want to listen to them, the people who want to hear what they have to say. And no, there's no arguing back. There's no uh, format 
there's no, not, the format's not the word, but there is no mechanism for arguing back with someone on a platform like a podcast. And this is why I don't think it's a coincidence that according to studies, people who listen to podcasts, as opposed to people who don't listen to podcasts, are generally higher educated individuals. These are people who make more money. Those are statistics have shown that. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that the higher educated individuals who make more money are the same people who are okay with consuming material where they don't, they are not even asked to and don't even have the capability of leaving a comment and having something to say about what somebody posted. I think those are not, I think there's a little bit of causation involved in that. It's not just a blind correlation. Anyway, let's move on to point number three. The topic, once again, is why I talk about controversial topics that I could easily pass over and not talk about at all. Number three, as a brand owner and thusly being in a position of leadership and influence, people want to know where I stand. And this applies to all people who are brands, people who are in positions of influence, people who are known out here online, whether you're a, a super celebrity, a micro celebrity, whatever level, you have people who are listening to you and want to know what you're saying. And they're really paying attention to what you're saying. And trust me, those of you who have, those of you who are in a position of influence, people are listening to you a lot more than you think they're listening to you. And they are retaining what you're saying, maybe a lot more than you think they're retaining what you're saying. You may think you just made some throwaway comment, but there are people who are really holding on to everything that you say once you get yourself into a position of influence, and you may be in that position even before you know that you are, people wanna know where you stand, and people wanna know why you stand where you stand. And while that very, that very idea scares some people when it comes to certain topics, it scares them to say, damn, people wanna know where I stand, I'm a white person, and this BLM stuff is going on, what am I supposed to say? And that may make you afraid, because you know that somebody, again, as I already said, somebody's gonna have something to say about it, no matter what you say, whether you said enough, you didn't say enough, whether you are on the wrong side or the right side, whatever, that very idea excites me. It excites me because I want you to know where I stand as much as you wanna know where I stand. And that, and that, understand, that excitement and that wanting to let people know where I stand, it comes with a responsibility. Because the responsibility is, as I just said, people are listening to you. People are really paying attention and people are influenced. And there's a reason why they call them influencers. People are influenced by your opinion, whether you think they are or, the, or you don't. They are being influenced. There are people who are making their decisions based on something that you said, even when you think you were just joking, even when you think you were just, that was just a throwaway comment, even when you think nobody's really paying attention. They are influenced by it. And the influencer is a, a fitting term for the people online who have audiences and people who are listening to them. And that responsibility that I'm referring to, I aim to honor that responsibility by looking at things from multiple angles. And I think I do a pretty good job of that. And if anyone ever thinks that I'm not looking at things from multiple angles, you can let me know. But I'm the type of person who can look at something like, if we take the, the Black Lives Matter you know, movement, idea, concept, whatever you wanna, however you wanna label it. We take Black Lives Matter, I can see why people who are strongly on the side of it, why they were upset, why they were up in you know, causing a ruckus and making noise and drawing attention in the summer of 2020 and moving forward. I'm sure they will show up again in full force when something else goes down. I can see why people on that side feel how they feel, but I can also see why people oppose it. And I did a whole episode talking exactly about that, why there are some people who don't feel it and why there are some people who do. And it has nothing to do with them being racist or against this race or on this, this right side or wrong side of history or any of those polarizing statements that people like to throw out when they're trying to you know, demonize someone for not having the same opinion as them. I can see why the, the capital situation that happened in Washington, D.C. at the beginning of January, I can see how that situation looked kind of crazy. Now, that did look crazy. When I saw what had happened and I'm looking at the videos and I'm like, wait a minute, why is this happening this way and why are these people doing this? There were, uh, I had a lot of questions. I still to this day have more questions than I have answers about what happened with that capital situation. I could see how that situation looked crazy. How if you were, you were, let's say you didn't vote for Trump, you voted against Trump and you were glad to hear that he was recognized as the loser of the 2020 presidential election and you saw that situation in the Capitol, and you're like, yo, this guy or these supporters, these particular supporters look crazy. I can see how you can feel that way. I can also see why it's crazy to say in the aftermath of that, and I've seen people say this, very influential people with very large platforms, say things like, 
All right, if you happen to be a Republican or you happen to be a Trump supporter or a conservative, now you're bad because you're bad by association because you voted for the guy who did this thing or who enticed these people to do this crazy thing. That's way too many. That's way, there are way too many logical jumps being made there. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to paint with a broad brush and say, OK, well, these 500 people, or however number of people who did this thing at the Capitol, they're wrong. They shouldn't have did that. But anyone who voted for the guy who they these 500 people were going in there and supporting their wrong, even though they were at home, they were in their office, they were somewhere minding their own business. They're wrong because they supported the guy who those people were doing that in the name of allegedly. That's crazy. All right. So this is what I'm saying. This is the way that. I want to be able to look at things objectively and I'm going to make sure that I verbalize those and make sure that everyone knows exactly where I stand. And the crazy thing is these days, what I just said, I would say maybe 10 years ago, not even 10 years ago, people hear what I just said and that would be like, all right, cool. Now, it really wouldn't, honestly, it wouldn't be adding to the conversation because that's pretty much what, how everybody would see things. But nowadays saying that is like, now some people might hear what I just said and be mad at me. Like, Dre, how are you going to not condemn those people who supported this guy because he did this? And, and there are people listening to me right now who are already formulating in their minds their argument for why I'm wrong for, you know, quote unquote, defending anybody who supported the guy who those people at the Capitol were doing whatever the hell you want to call them doing to support him. But again, I will give you the full context of why I'm saying what I'm saying. And I, I pretty much just gave it to you. So. What I found these days, not what I found, but what we all know, actually, if you look around online and you may have to look in the mirror as well, is that there's a whole lot of broad brushing going on these days that people just take one idea and one concept and say, OK, anybody who thinks this way, you're this, 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 this is just a laundry list of things just because you think this way or because you took this action or you didn't take that action or you're not on this side of the opinion that I'm on, then we're just going to put all of these negative labels on you. That's ridiculous. And there's a lot of uh, nuances, a lot of context that need to be had in these conversations. There's a lot of gray in the conversations that these days, because people don't take the time to think, people don't take the time to read, and people do not put the effort in. People are lazy. I told you these three truths about human beings. People are lazy, people don't think, and people don't read. That we get these, these broad strokes that people are being that are, people are being labeled with, and people are thrown around so recklessly and so freely that... I think is leading us into a bad place. This is human beings, period. This is not about politics or black and white. It is about those things, but it's not really about those things. I talked about this in episode 1717, three most dangerous truths about human beings. All that being said, let's move on to point number four. The topic, once again, is why I talk about these, you know, quote unquote, controversial topics that I could choose to not talk about. Number four, because not everybody's going to agree with me. This is one of the reasons why I talk about them, because not everybody is going to agree with me. And I'm perfectly fine with that, because as I told you already, even though I did an episode where I told you that preaching to the choir, episode 1507 is a good idea. Preaching to the choir is a good idea to tell people the things that they already want to hear, that they already know, that they already agree with. Understand that you're not adding anything to the conversation if that's all you do. Now, do I preach to the choir at times? Absolutely, I do. I mean, many of you have been listening to the show for years. You know exactly what it's about. You know exactly what you're going to get. You're part of the choir. But there are people who are listening to me right now who are skeptical. They're not quite sure. They don't know. There are people listening to me right now who are like, you know what? Fuck Dre. I'm not listening to him anymore because I don't like what he said about BLM or I don't like what he said about Trump. And they're never going to listen to the show again. And that's all right. I'm good with that. I don't want everybody to agree with me. Because that's what gives life its flavor. If we all agree with each other and we all had the same opinions and our influencers or leaders or whatever you want to call them always said what they thought the audience wanted to hear. First of all, the world would never move forward. Second of all, it would be quite boring because everybody has the same opinions. And yeah, that's two good enough reasons. But I will stand on how I see things. And why I see them the way that I see them at all times. As long as this platform exists, I'm talking specifically for this audio show. As long as this platform exists, this will be the place that Dre Baldwin is on the record with how he feels and why on certain subjects. I cannot be interrupted. Ain't no co host I can talk for as long or as short as I want. And there's no comment section. I'm going to say exactly what I want to say. I say what I want to say even when there is a comment section. But there are a lot of influencers who don't. And I know that they don't. But all that being said... If I end up, if I get a fact wrong, if I say something as a factual truth and is wrong, you can let me know. You can check me on a fact. 
Now, if we disagree on opinions, well, we just gonna have to disagree because I got, this is my show. And if you got an opinion and you really feel that strongly about it, then you can start your own show, it's free. I got episodes telling you how to start your own podcast. So I will create my competition by telling you exactly how to go do it. All right, so we all had the same opinion, nobody would grow. There really wouldn't be any value, there wouldn't be any point in me even doing the show. So those are the reasons why I talk about these topics. So let's recap today's topic once again, which is why I talk about topics that could be deemed controversial, such as Trump, politics, BLM, AOM, police, people of color, social justice, all of these things that I'm talking about, many of these things just in the last six, seven months. And who knows, by the time you hear this episode, maybe something else happened and I've already recorded another episode talking about that. But why do I do it when I could easily just sidestep these potential landmines? Number one, I can't ignore or act like something is not happening. I told you in 1474, when something is real news, you won't have to watch the news and know about it. If I find out about it, because I don't watch the news, I don't even own the TV, then it's news and I will discuss it. Point number two, my brand is built around addressing shit directly. Many influential people appear to me afraid of addressing things in the way that maybe they really feel because they're afraid of the very backlash that they might get based on the topic. Point number three, as a brand owner and thus being in a position of leadership and influence, people want to know where I stand. They want to know why I stand there. That will either turn them completely away and they say, I'm not dealing with this person ever again, or they will buy in even more because of what you said and the way that you were able to communicate it. And I'm good with that happening with me, with people saying I'm out completely because of what you said and people saying I'm in completely because of what you said. That is, I wouldn't even call it, I'm not trying to polarize, but because these topics are so polarizing, when, as soon as you jump into them, people are going to be polarized by what you say, no matter what you say. And point number four, because not everybody will agree with me and I'm perfectly fine with that. That's what gives life its flavor. Everybody is not supposed to agree. If everyone agreed, we'd all be the same. There'd be no need for this show right now. Who knows what we'd be doing? But all that being said, I have a course called Bulletproof Mindset 2.0. We've updated the course, this new version of the course that is my flagship course. If I had to take one course ever, it would be that one. But we go over all the mental tools that you need to bulletproof your mindset, to have the discipline, confidence, mental toughness, and the initiative, not only within yourself, but also to take them out into the world and communicate with them both verbally and non-verbally so that you can stop holding yourself back in life and you can really be the person that at your core you truly want to be, which has nothing to do with these surface trappings that you call yourself going after every single day. You want to take Bulletproof Mindset, you can get it at Work On Your Game University by going to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Work On Your Game. Dre, all day.